Folks are asking how the uh, John Deere electric conversion tractor is wired. I figured a video is probably the easiest way to explain what's going on here. So first of all, this is a John Deere 214 garden tractor. The uh, electric motor has been uh, installed and replaces the internal combustion engine. This is a 13 horsepower either 36 or 48 volt motor, DC motor. I'm running it on 36 volts and the reason for that is I really didn't want to put three batteries in the front of this tractor and uh, unbalance it so to speak. There's two batteries in the front, one in the back. Uh, running off 36 volts is plenty for a yard tractor. If I was running the mower deck off this main motor I would want 48 volts. At 48 volts the motor spins at about 3300 RPM which is perfect for the mower deck. At 36 volts we're substantially less than that. But still plenty of torque being an electric motor. Uh, this thing, uh, it just never, it, you run out of traction way before you run out of torque. So let's talk about how it's wired. Obviously we have positive and negative uh, 3 12 volt AGM 105 amp hour deep cycle batteries. Let's start at the negative. This is battery number two I call it and from this negative post we run this piece of uh, one gauge wire up to a shunt and this shunt is what sends signal and information to a battery monitor to let me know how many amp hours I have, how many I'm using, how many I have left, what's my battery voltage, how many amps am I using, etc. One side of the shunt is connected directly to the negative side of this battery. The other wire that's on this negative side of the shunt is simply the power, the negative lead for the battery monitor. These other wires are all part of the battery monitor to tell me what's going on with the batteries. The other side of the shunt, all the grounds, all the negatives are attached here. All the 36 volt negatives are attached there. Uh, folks are asking why I use two wires to feed the motor from the negative side of the battery system. And the answer is I happen to have this wire hanging around. It was already terminated, it was the right length. And wire is expensive and I just really didn't want to use another piece of, uh, of uh, one aught wire. So that goes directly to the motor, to the negative side of the motor. Now the positive side of this battery is a piece of uh, one aught welding cable. And that runs all the way to the back of the tractor. And under the seat is mounted another AGM 12 volt battery. From the positive side of that battery, and I'll just quickly give you a, a snake's eye view of what's going on under there, but from the positive side of that battery we have another piece of one aught welding cable and that runs up here to the negative side of the second battery. The positive side of that battery now runs over to a 400 amp fuse. So as you can see the three batteries are wired in series. 12 times 3 is 36 volts. So we run over to a 400 amp fuse and from that 400 amp fuse we're going over to what I call a dead man switch. This is a 350 amp uh, switch that I can shut the entire tractor off if something goes wrong or just to completely disconnect everything electrical when it's in storage. Now from the other side of this switch we go over to the positive side of the contactor. This contactor is a 400 amp contactor. This black wire that you see here simply goes to the key switch on the dashboard and when ground or negative is applied to that wire the contact closes and the motor starts. So we have 36 volts in on one side, 36 volts out on the other side to the positive lead of the motor. 
Now on this contactor you see a diode and a resistor. These devices are there to protect the contactor from very high inrush current. There's enormous amount of current that happens the minute you turn the motor on and these the diode and the resistor dissipates that so that we're not burning out these contactors one after the other. The small red wire that you see here simply is power to the contactor. Uh, some contactors that is built in on this particular contactor. It's a four wire contactor, two large wires for the high current and then two smaller uh, screw terminals for the switch current. Uh, so in this case I had to supply 12 volts, uh, I'm sorry, 36 volts uh, to that contactor switch to activate it. So that's the high voltage part of the system. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Uh, power in through switches and fuses through a contactor and the motor starts. Now I have 12 volt accessories, a fan, lights, and who knows what else I might, maybe a cell phone charger or something. So I needed 12 volts. To do that I installed a converter. That's this aluminum fin device here. This device takes 36 or 48 volts and converts it to 12 volts. So that is fed directly off of the dead man switch so that when I shut off the dead man switch the converter is also shut off. From that converter it goes into a 12 volt fuse box and from this fuse box I'm running the fan, the lights, um, the battery monitor circuitry, etc. And that's all mounted up here on the dash. These switches control uh, the lights, a fan, uh, the third switch isn't being used at the moment. That's the battery monitor, which will once again tell me how many volts and watts and amps and amp hours, etc. I also have a temperature gauge, which is self-supporting. It has its own battery. It's actually an aquarium temperature gauge. You use it to monitor the temperature in your fish tank. But it simply uh, sits on the dash, has a wire, the wire runs down with a sender that I have simply taped with Gorilla Tape to the side of the motor. Pretty simple. Now the negatives, or some people refer to them as grounds, from the 12 volt side of system goes right here to this bus bar. All the 12 volt negative leads are attached to that bus bar and that bus bar gets us 12 volts once again from the converter. So that's basically what's going on here, and I'll just give you uh, an idea of how this all works. So when we want to run the tractor, the first thing we do is we just come over here and we turn on the power. That activates the battery monitor system, and that big red light at the top is illuminated, telling me that the tractor is, in, the tractor is ready to go. The, the electricity is turned on. Let's put it in neutral. And then it's just a simple matter of turning the key switch. I converted this key switch to operate the con contactor. I didn't have the clutch in and locked, which uh, would have made it much more quiet. In fact, let's, let's just do that. Put the clutch in. Let's lock it. And now listen how quiet it is. That's how quiet this thing is when the transmission and the belts aren't running. Very quiet. So that's the story. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.